people. The United States school system is failing. Change it. Same people. Lower the voting age. Educated young people support us. So I came up with this thought when I was just realizing how many people on the Democratic side, the Democrat Party in the United States of America, people on the political left, make the claim that the youth, the young voters, specifically the young educated voters, and they define educated as people that have high school degrees and college degrees, that's what they normally consider that, they say these are the people who really do support the Democrats. This is quite common. I don't think I'm the only one who was more politically left-leaning as a child in high school when I was in my teens and things like this, but I also just didn't pay that much attention to actual politics. I also had yet to actually feel the effect of being taxed. I was on the end that was actually benefiting from taxation. I was in the end in public school by being educated by people who were being directly paid by taxation. So that kind of brings up some questions into how I would actually have a point of view to be for possibly smaller government and less taxation. Then there is also that one saying that says, um, if you are not a liberal at 25, you have no heart. And if you are not a conservative at 35, you have no brain. And this is normally attributed to like Edmund Burke and Winston Churchill and one of my favorite new sites that I've mentioned in a separate video quote investigator says it actually has something to do it's being attributed as the earliest one to uh, Anselm Bati as the originator of this phrase this thing that turned into whatever it is now so anyway this is a cool site you should check it out it has a lot of cool things in there but back to this so this thing with the students they're talking about actually dropping the age from under 18 to around 16. Now, in the United States of America specifically, there is a 26th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which is what said you can't uh, neglect or you cannot... It says here, to the 26th Amendment of the United States Constitution prohibits the states and the federal government from using age as a reason for denying the right to vote to citizens of the United States of America who are at least 18 years old. So it's like, hey, we're still prohibiting people below 18, and what is that change? What if you are actually going to be 18 on the day after the election? You're not allowed to vote, but for what arbitrary reason? And I know for practicality's sake, you just have to have a date that kind of organizes it, that averages these things, but what are the averages picked? If there are general averages that people can decide to say that, yes, most people at this time have the actual level of understanding of these topics in order to do this thing and make decisions based on this thing, then I think we have the ability to do it more than just a random age. Because I'm not going to be the kind of person who says, oh, this is based because you're trying to tell me like you wake up when you're 18 and then all of a sudden when the clock ticks over, you're, you're going to have a brand new mind. No, I don't think anyone actually believes that. But I think one thing a lot of people do believe is there seems to be this more extended childhood. If anything, this whole thing of somebody taking on adult adult mentality and responsibilities and world point of view, I am thinking that age is actually getting much later as people get, in certain cultures and societies, have an expectation to live longer and life is being extended in that sense. Where I think your average 25-year-old today may have the mentality, your average American 25-year-old may have the mentality and approach to the world in general that is somewhat as childish as your average 15-year-old American did 50 years ago. Now, I'm not quite sure of this. I don't know if there's actually tests and studies how you'd actually figure this out, but I see a lot of people saying they demanding actual things and acting in certain ways that are rather childish. And this could just be the change of information, access to information, access to being heard. Maybe it's just the same percent. In the 1950s, there was also 15% of 25-year-olds that were just very childish. And then I just never really heard of these people because they didn't have the internet and ability to just have blogs and YouTube pages. And there wasn't so much excess wealth and time in the society to cover what these people were talking about. And with history, we only heard about the ones that actually achieved things. Books and things like that, stories were only written about the high-achieving 25-year-olds rather than the average 25-year-old that might have been exactly the same as the average 25-year-old today. Let me know what you think about that one, but I'm thinking there were some things, just basic things in society that were testing people in a different way. And when we talk about testing, I think that's one thing you actually can check. You can actually see the average school system, the average tests and things that were done to actually tell if somebody is 
educated, not schooled, but educated, in the 1950s was a lot more academically rigorous than it is today. So if you're talking about how the school system is failing kids, and I am one of the people who will say the common core and things like that, and the rest of the world trying to adopt these things, but right now we're going through a pandemic and people are trying homeschooling and unschooling, distance learning. I think we are going to have a revolution in the way people learn. There is access to more valuable information today, yet I think there's more people who think the schooling system is the best place to get that. Yet you have people on the democratic side, on the political left, who seem to be more about talking about the failures of the school system. Although let me not just say that, because I think there's also people on the political right who are saying, look, we need to end the schools because there's actually indoctrination there. So I think both parties understand there are issues with the schools. I think the Democrats bring those questions because they know these are the teachers unions and things like that, a big support for them. They understand there's indoctrination going on for these kids for more socialist policies and things like that. The more you keep the kids dependent, the more they need that nanny type of state and the more they vote for those things. They also were dropped off as kids to the state, to these public servants, and they have that affinity towards these people that they have this kind of parental relationship with. They are generally more appreciative because I think schooling system is not that positive when it comes to actual education, but they, in general, on average, most people have somewhat positive feelings about their experience there, so it's hard for them to just come out and be against the system that depends on that. And the system that depends on that, at least, is portrayed by the Democratic Party, the Democratic Party, by the political left, to be that way. So when it comes to politics, people aren't completely honest. It's a lot of rhetoric. When they're talking about the schools are being failed and we need to spend more money, it's about sending more money into there. They're not saying the schools are doing a bad job of actually educating and informing children because they also, in the inverse, say, like, look, the schools have been so successful that look at the children. They know so well that they can decide and they can simply see that we are the better party instead of the political right. But... I think there's the Generation Z thing in the United States saying it's a lot more conservative than the historical ones. But then how politically left the previous generations have leaned means like you can be conservative in comparison to that with the return window where it doesn't really matter. It doesn't really mean that much. So what do you guys think about this? What do you think about this? Is it a dichotomy or it's for different reasons or it's just political so it doesn't have to be rational? One last thing on this, if you do think it's appropriate to have an 18-year-old or 16-year-old age, for some reason somebody needs that number of years in order to actually be able to have an educated vote on the actual situation that's going on wherever they live and what they're voting on, how would you think about establishing that for immigrants? If you immigrate into a country and you're over the voting age, you need to have been living in that country as a citizen for at least half the actual voting age in order to say, like, yes, this person has understood enough about the culture they're voting in. I would embrace that. I am not really pro-voting. I think there I have many objections with the state themselves. But if you if people are comfortable enough with that, then have that. And then there is the situation on the other end of the scope. When you vote for something, it is things that affects years, decades, centuries, some of these things. And then you have people who ostensibly have maybe five to 10 years to live, and they're voting on policies that will deal with things for 50, 100 years. Should there be some kind of change of the situation where if you only find a way to vote on the years, on things based on the years that you have left to live? There's weird things with voting that just bring up questions. Why do people have the limitations that you want. If you are for voting, do you think it should just be completely universal? Everybody should be allowed to vote. What do you think the situation to be with voting? Let me know what you guys think. This is part of my shorty series where I take small thoughts that I post on social media, then I expand on them in video form. So hopefully we can have conversations and engage with them. Like, share, and subscribe. If you liked what I was saying, leave a like. If you don't, (laughs) if you dislike, hit the notification bell if you're watching this on YouTube. There's also links to our merchandise store or different merchandise there. And also links for PayPal, where if you want to help me out with one-time donations, that would be much appreciated. And thank you. Till next time, goodbye. And who are you voting for in the next election that you plan on voting for?